Carl, welcome to this week's edition of In The Dugout. We'll start off with some positive news for the club, the re-signing of Ryan Wright. Just explain to us, thinking behind that, and what he can offer next season. Uh, listen, Ryan, Ryan Wright gets stuck in when he, you know, when he plays, he, he gives everything you got. He might not be the biggest, but he's, he plays tough, and I don't think we've seen the best of him. Um, and, and where we're at, you know, with the injuries and stuff like that last season, we need to make sure we've got adequate cover in all positions. Now Ryan can play in a few positions and, and plays well in them. So, you know, he's another one who's challenging to try and get in the team and, and he he's a fighter. He'll definitely uh, give everything he's got in training and in the games. Um, he had a few injuries last year and played with him that a lot of people didn't know, um, apart from the people with inside the camp. So, you know, we're happy to have him on board. As you say, it adds in-depth competition to the club. Kyle Keswick, the club's longest serving player. How much pressure does it put on him next season to perform to the best of his ability? Uh, oh, listen, Kizzy, Kizzy knows there's pressure on him and probably that's what brings the best out of him. Um, when he's challenged, he's we all know what he can do, Kez, when he's challenged. And, you know, in that training, if he feels like someone's snapping at his heels, he'll get stuck in and then his performances on the field will warrant that he keeps his shirt. And that, Kizzy's just exactly like, Writing them, because he's a fighter, and but Kez needs to be challenged to to give everything. You mentioned training there. The boys are back in for pre-season now. Uh, what are the signs so far? What are you? Oh, I went down there. I went down there um, to have a look uh, on Tuesday, and like I keep saying, they're a very very big team, and um, I think they're they're not all falling in love with Reese Lovegrove at the moment, which is is probably a good thing. Um, like I said last week, I think Reese will be really important to us. And you know, they were only in the gym last week, but um, they were working hard. And you know, I'm pretty sure that we'll we'll see the benefits of that as the weeks go by. But a good, good group. They seem to all be getting on, and you know, all all having a bit of fun as well. So it's to say that it was, I think, the second session back in it. It was like that they were all getting on quite well, and that's that's something we try and build here. You know, it's a uh, we build a culture where everyone gets on. No one's bigger than anyone else, and you know it's um, it'll hold us in good stead. I think that the boys get on. That's that's the main thing. But as long as they're working hard and giving everything they've got, then we're happy. Uh, not long now to go with the season ticket deadline, uh, the 30th of November. Just to explain to fans how crucial it could be to them personally to get the season tickets before next week. Oh, that that deadline's only for for um, to go into the draw for Palestina to. Um, drop the tickets to a few people's houses that he'll do and one or two of the other boys will probably tag along with them as well so that's um you know if you want fix come in to drop your season ticket to your house then get that before next week and then you know you've got you've got december to get them and then you know the actual price goes up in january so uh with the signings we've made and uh, and i think the uh the little bit of excitement that's going on around the place is um it's a it's a good time to get them, and you know Christmas coming up as well. So again, a lot of people I will mention this as well, Robbie. A lot of people are asking about the the shirts, and um, you know the the plan is to have them here mid December. Hopefully, the the date we've been given is around the sixteenth. Hopefully, we can get them a bit earlier. A um, little bit of confusion as well about Kitty's shirts. I think the smallest we did last year was a, a size six, um, and that fitted a few two or three four year olds um you know that we've been we've been told by the manufacturer the smaller size will be six as it was last year um and again that's what it is for now and if if people want to any smaller sizes then they can see jackie or or whoever or go into the club shop and, and ask them if they can if they can order one but at, at this moment in time we're, we're focusing on trying to bring the um the replicas here for everyone for christmas but it's not ideal if you know uh, to to go through the the ranges of getting sizes from naught to six and six to th 12 months and all these sort of things it's it's quite difficult um you know when you're a big club uh, as a super league club and all that i think you have all them sizes but we always try and help our supporters and do what we can for them and you know I'll certainly try my best to see if we can accommodate their wishes but sometimes it's very very difficult. Moving on to uh, elsewhere in League One now then, obviously Toronto coming into the league next season, they've announced recently the signing of Fui Fui Moi Moi, with big signings like that how important is it for the Dons to hit the ground running next season and sort of stamp their authority and show that they're 
a force to be reckoned with? Oh, you know, I think I think it's great, you know, to get them sort of players playing at, at in that level, in, the, in our level, and, you know, it should generate some interest within the crowds and Toronto coming to Doncaster. That doesn't happen every day. Um, so we're already looking at building that game up and it's a game that all our boys are looking at, um, asking when are we playing them, when are we playing them. So, listen, it'll be a, it'll be a cracker, but, you know, we've got a lot of work to do before then and, you know, we, but like I say, we will we will promote that Toronto game as best we can because it's not every day that Toronto comes to uh, to Doncaster as we discussed in the fans panel meeting last night. With overseas teams coming over, we'll move on to the subject of slightly sore subject for yourself with the Four Nations final. Uh, just give us your thoughts on that and and where it went wrong for the Kiwis. Oh, listen, you know, I said it on the day. I thought sometimes you just have to sit back and take a breath and just say. They were too good. The, you know, the Aussies they don't, they don't change a hell of a lot or do, you know, play flash and that. But what they do, they do everything right. And, you know, when the Kiwis went a, went all the way upfield from their own try line and Sean Johnson just passed the ball out and they, if they would have got that try, then it might have lifted them. But within six tackles, Australia goes down the other end and scores. So. I think on the day they were just too good and, and you know, let's be fair, sometimes you just have to say, well, they were too they were too good and and the Kiwi boys looked a little bit off it off it to be honest. Uh, we'll move on to another Australian. Chris Sandow in the headlines this week is uh, quite sensationally walked out on Warrington Wolves and the week where he was supposed to be reporting back for pre season. Just to explain how much of an impact that could have on a club. Obviously a player who's big in their plans for next season. How, how hard is it at this stage to try and get another player in of that calibre to go again for 2017? Oh, listen, I don't know too much of the ins and outs of, of what happened there, but, you know, it, it sounds really disappointing for Warrington as not only is he, is he a marquee player for them, he's also a, plays in a key position for them. So really difficult to, um, to find a suitable replacement of, or someone of that calibre. It's tough and, you know... People say that it, all along he was, you know, Warrington had planned for him to be here and play for them, and for him, you know, just to to spring that on them at the at this late stage, it'll be pretty tough for that club. But you know, I'm pretty sure one one door closes, another door opens, and they'll they'll find a suitable replacement. But you know, it's pretty bad form on the on the player, and it's a bit disappointing on the you know leaving it this late in the game. So it, it has an, a massive an effect on the club and. And it's it's no good. And you know, if it happened to us in a in a key area of a halfback or something like that at this late stage in the game, it's real tough to to replace them. Carl, thanks once again.